Okay, today we're going to talk about something that Maria's been getting a lot of questions asked on, and that is, can I just sub out the whole contract? I know it may seem silly to a lot of people out there, but surprisingly enough, we've been getting that question asked so much that apparently the rumor reel is going around and telling people that they can get a contract, sub out the whole thing, and make money. And we are here to dispel any rumors, any myths, any misconceptions. Again, this industry can be uh, very convoluted, but it doesn't help when people spread misinformation. And so my job here is to uh, rebut that information that people are spreading and put back into place or put back into your brains the correct information so that you, when you're going out there and you're doing things and you're talking to folks, you don't sound like an idiot pretty much, right? We want you to have all of the facts so that you can make the correct decisions. Because, again, if you know how to play the game and you know the rules of the game, um, then you can be successful. But if someone is giving you the wrong rules, then how can you even have a possible chance at winning the game? I don't want to see you get in trouble. I don't want to see you on front page news or in your local news, right, talking about um, this contractor uh, took a deal, brokered the whole deal, and he violated 52.2.9 uh 52.219-4, limitations on subcontracting. So today we're going to talk about the fact that no, you cannot subcontract an entire contract. So let's look at 52.219-4, limits on subcontracting. This is the part of the regulations that talks about how it is you're supposed to handle it. Um, when you get a contract from the government, how do you handle performing a certain percentage of that work? Now, let's note that this does not apply to unrestricted solicitations, nor does it apply to some contractors. So again, if it's not a small business set aside of any sorts, or if you are a subcontractor that got a big contract, then this does not apply to you. It only applies if you are a prime contractor on a some sort of uh, set aside type of project, right? Whether it be small business, woman owned 8A, whatever, whatnot. So again, that's when this thing comes into play. Now, the limits of subcontracting, very simple. It says, if you provide a service, you have to perform 50% of the work. That's it. So if you provide a first service, you've got to perform 50% of the work. Uh, if you provide supplies, now, this one's a little bit trickier. If you provide supplies, and it says, other than from non-manufacturer of supplies, uh, you've got to do 50% of the supplies. Now, if the government puts out a quote for, let's say, um, for iPads or for 14 CDs or laptops, the case may be, uh, that doesn't apply to you because you are, this is other than non-manufacturer, so you're a non-manufacturer, so again, in that particular instance, you could sell them the supply, you could resell, right, a product and not be part of that 50%. So that, on the supply side, that kind of goes out the window because very few of us are actually manufacturing it. That comes into play when you are an actual manufacturer and let's say you are making uh, shirts for the government, then in that case, you'd have to make 50% of the shirts. But if you are reselling some a product that's actually uh, off-the-shelf type of product, this goes out the window. So again, mostly it's going to apply to people in services. So who are those people in services? We're talking about janitorial, right, logistics, okay, transportation, that kind of stuff. Those are services, okay, if you have, if you do accounting, right, or if you do legal services, or if you do um, financial services, right, so those are all services that fall in 50%. Construction, construction is a little bit trickier. Uh, construction, there's, essentially, there's two criteria. If it's general construction, which falls under the prefix of 236, you've got to self-perform 15% of the work. If it's specialty construction, which falls in the prefix of 238, then 25% of the work is what you have to perform. Uh, specialty trades are your trades like air conditioning, electrical, um, and uh, plumbing. And then general construction will be you know, the big boys, right? So when they give you a big project and you've got to do multiple trades in that project, uh, that falls under 236 and it's only 15% of the work. So you could essentially uh, sub out the majority of the work. Now, Eric... What does this mean, right? How do, how do I look at this stuff? So the way that you look at this is essentially uh, if you get a contract, 
let's say two hundred thousand dollars, right? Um, and it's a service contract, a janitorial contract. If you get a contract for two hundred thousand dollars, janitorial contract, then You cannot award more than $100,000 uh, of that contract to subcontractors. So if you get a contract for $200,000 janitorial, you cannot award more than $100,000 to subs. Now, in your $100,000 up here can be your profit, management, overhead, so in your $100,000 can be your profit. If you got a 20% profit, right? Now that takes your $80,000 of actual work that you've got to do. If you take out your management costs, maybe it's 40,000 worth of work to do. Makes sense? So again, you and technically inside of a $200,000 contract, there's going to be some management and there's going to be some profit. So what we what we do is uh, here, right? If we say this is our fine line up here inside and you're let's say you're the prime you get to you know inside of your 50% you're allowed to put your profit in that 50% right so it, it's not that you have to do $100,000 worth of actual work but you cannot sub out more than $100,000 to a subcontractor so again uh, when you look at it just think of creative ways in which you can meet this goal the other thing that you're allowed to do, which I think uh, is something a better strategy. So I'm a visual person. Okay, so you got a box. Now, let's say you want it to, let's say you're the prime and you're gonna, you have a company that's gonna do all the work for you, right? So you're the prime, you've got a company, they're gonna do all this work for you. Okay, now, you're the prime, you're just getting started, you're a woman-owned business, you're an 8A, you're a hub zone, whatever the case may be. You're like Eric, but I've got a company, they're going to do everything for me, I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to think, right? Okay, perfect. However, because of the regulations and the rules, you have to perform 50% of the work. So what I tell people that we've done in the past, which you know, I highly suggest that people do is, if you've got to perform 50% of the work, then what I would say is take, if, there's, if you know there's going to be one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, so there's 16 people working on this job. How many people do you need to do 50% of your work? Eight. So what I would do is I would hire I would literally hire eight people onto my contract. So I would go off and I would hire eight people onto my contract to do this work. And so now, what do you have? You've got eight people that you put on your payroll that are going to manage this project. And then you have eight people, right, from the subcontractor that is going to do their 50% of work. And that's one way that we can get around hitting that 50% goal is that we just take the people from the, who is essentially, who has the employees, we put them over here on our payroll, right, using a payroll company. And now we've satisfied our 50% requirement. So that's another way in which you can hit your 50% goals, right? It's just taking those people and putting them over here. And that's a way that you can hit those goals. And that goes for construction um, as well. So the same thing in construction down here. If we're looking at it and we're saying, okay, in construction, I've got to do 25% of work here, right? So you've got to do 25% of work. Well, if you figure on the job, you're going to get... 15 to 20% profit 
uh, that right here mostly is going to be pretty much all profit. It's going to cover that 15 to 20%, right? So again, uh, you can technically sub out the, the bulk of the work, and you just got to make sure the numbers make sense, right? You could, but if, there, if you have a shortfall, then you can do this same approach here, which is taking the employees from the subcontractor, putting them on your payroll just for the period of that project, and that will allow you to remain compliant. I know a question that people are going to ask because I've been asked this question before. What about 1099s? 1099ers. And the answer is no. A 1099 is not an employee. A 1099 is technically a contractor. So if, again, that doesn't work in this scenario. You have to put them on your payroll. A 1099er is a contractor. So again, a 1099 for the purposes of the IRS is what? They are someone that's not employed by your firm. That is goes against the whole point of self-performing work. You have to perform it with your own labor, your own staff, your own employees. So 1099ers do not count towards self-performing and uh, adhering to the limitations of subcontracting. That does not work. So I just wanted to come on and share this with everyone and dispel some of these myths that we've been hearing out there per 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 perpetuating uh, amongst the GovCon world and community. And I, and it, and I understand it. Listen, you know, you're getting information from here, you're getting information from over there, you're getting it from your cousin, you're getting it from Ray Ray Nim and all these people that may not have already done the level of contracts that it takes to have had to meet these types of obligations. So again, if you're dealing with really, you know, much smaller type of vehicles, it probably doesn't come into play because if you're doing a $30,000 contract and you've got to self-perform 75% uh, of 30,000, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. But when you start getting up to larger, larger contracts, uh, if you let's say on a $200,000 deal, that's $100,000 worth of work. And for a lot of people, that can be challenging. Okay. Hey, thanks so much. Just want to come on today and talk about that. Maria brought it up to me and I wanted to address it to everyone out there and kind of put this to rest and hopefully answer some questions for you guys. Thank you.